We just took grandma's recipe and we're gonna show you how to take this and turn it into a digital file to be used for sublimation or engraving. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're doing some recipe restoration. That was harder than it looked. <laughs> <laughs> we had a friend ask us to put a recipe on some hand towels and a cutting board. Yeah, she talked about using vinyl, but and she did attempt it on vinyl, but it didn't look great. So we told her a little bit about sublimation and we're gonna quickly pump out this project for her and allow her to meet her customer's needs and I'm gonna <laughs> teach her a little something along the way. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed the, uh, the recipe since that's what we're putting this thing on. Grandma's handwritten recipe. Yeah, grandma's handwritten. It's very delicate, it's yeah. like old paper. I don't even know, yeah, it's like tissue paper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful. Careful. We also need a sublimation printer. We have an Epson EcoTank 2760 that we converted. We didn't even convert. We just added the ink to a new printer. Super easy. Sublimation paper, some high heat tape to hold it in place. Butcher paper, which is our meat hugger. We're still rocking this big <laughs> box of meat hugger paper. Our Cricut Easy Press. We're gonna need some hand towels. We're gonna use cotton, so we're gonna add a spray to these cotton hand towels. And because we needed to complete this project quickly, we just went on Amazon and found the fastest thing we could get. And this is Sublib Plus Mate. Uh, this is the spray we're using so we haven't tried it yet fingers crossed this works out like we have planned <laughs> we also have this cutting board that she gave us and we're going to engrave on it using the glow forge and i think that is it i think so step one <laughs> we're going to make this recipe a digital file i'm just going to take this Scan it in using our EcoTank 2760. It's not just a printer, it um, also scans and it copies. So we'll be putting this in here. <laughs> I'm gonna scan it in and I'll meet you over at Photoshop. All right, we're just gonna get started with the Epson scan utility that came with the Epson 2760. It was part of the utility package and drivers that were installed when we installed the sublimation printer. So we're just gonna go in, we're not gonna use the default settings. We're gonna go color, resolution, we want like 600 DPI, and we want it in a TIFF format. Let's preview it and see what we got. Not bad, I put it in a little crooked. Advanced settings, let's go to remove background. Doesn't really look like anything. All right, let's hit scan. It's gonna take a minute. All right, once it comes up, it's dumped into the documents folder. We're just gonna find it, click on it, right click on it, open with Photoshop. Bam, there it is. Let's check it out. All right, let's uh, make a copy of this background first. Duplicate layer, background copy works. Let's make two just in case. Duplicate layer, copy two is great. All right, let's use our polygon lasso tool and we're just gonna draw around this piece of paper. Control C, it's gonna copy. Control V, we'll paste, bam. Now I can get rid of this layer. Actually, let's make a new layer. Layer, new layer, layer two. I'm gonna grab this paint bucket tool and then I'm going to make this white so white is FF 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 now on that layer 2 that I just made let's click the paint bucket BAM now I have a white background let's straighten this card out a little bit I'm gonna need a guide so I'm gonna go up to my ruler I'm gonna grab the ruler and I'm gonna pull down that gives me a little guide now I can tilt this, rotate it up. Looks pretty good. Great. Let's put this back. Drag it back up to the 
back up to the ruler. Now using my selection tool, I'm gonna go up to image, adjustments, levels, all right? From here, I'm gonna take this little white point, this little white selection dropper tool, and I'm gonna pick like a dark part of the background. This will be my new white. Looks pretty good, hold on, let's see what we got. Let's go up in here. All right, looks good. Let's drag the black up a little bit and make these a little darker. All right, that will work. Okay. Zoom in, see what we got, all right. I'm gonna use the magic wand tool. I'm gonna select the background somewhere over here. Maybe a little dirty piece. Boop. I'm gonna to go to a select similar. This should select everything inside the letters too. I'm gonna to zoom in and check it out. All right, left the blue. Blue's looking pretty good. Picked up some stragglers, that's okay. For this, I'm gonna stay on the magic wand tool and I'm gonna hold shift and select this brown piece. Now, select it again. Select this brown piece. And we're just gonna hit delete. Bam. Then control D to deselect. Go through, we'll hit the magic wand on this piece. Oops. What is that? I'll go uh, select similar, delete. Let's see if we got any stragglers. Got some pieces out here. Got some pieces out here. All right, well, they're still selected like this. While I have the white selected, I'm gonna go select inverse, go over to my erase tool, grab it. I'm gonna erase these that are highlighted with the little uh, marquee ring around it. Highlighted them, so now I can delete them. I think I got them all. So I'm going to uh, deselect Control D. Use the magic wand one more time and select it. See if I got any big stragglers. Nah, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. All right, looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Duplicate layer. Made it just a little bit darker. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna do some adjustments, levels. I'm gonna drag the level up a little bit, make it a little bit darker. Okay, let's crop it. Go to my crop tool. Crop it in. Looking good, looking good. Now we'll go file, export, export as JPEG, great. We're going to great JPEG, export. Let's name this one, what is this stuff? Hot fudge sauce. Hot fudge sauce, ooh. Now I'm hungry. Step three, we're gonna print and sublimate. We're gonna print out our design now. It's now a digital design. Out on this printer using the sublimation paper. We're gonna flip it, inverse it. We're gonna inverse the image and print it out. We're gonna use Word. All right, I'm just gonna use Word to print our sublimation images. To me, it's the easiest way to actually find out how big the image is really gonna be. I'm looking for hot fudge. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bump up 
Oops, where is it? I'm gonna bump up the saturation. I'm gonna bump it up like 40%. The biggest we can go is six by six. So let me take the width down to six. And I could probably fit two on here. So copy, paste. Let's flip these. Click on it, picture format, rotate, flip horizontal. Do it to this bottom one too. Rotate, flip horizontal. File, print. Got our Epson 2760 selected, print. Potato chip snack. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all printed out. Looks pretty good. Oh, where's the original? Let's mash it up. Let's see. I think it's on the scanner. Oh, it's still on the scanner. Oop, there it is. Oop, Whoop, there, there it is. is. Oh, look at that. Pretty, pretty good. Looks beautiful. Bam, can you see it? Check it out, take it in. All right, we're gonna trim it up so that it'll be smaller when we're trying to sublimate it on the towel. Yeah, I don't know if you could tell that was two copies of it. Yeah, just in case. Anytime we do sublimation, you want to get it as close to the image as possible. Keep it tight. All right. All right. Tight. Oh, do you want to tell them about the spray? So we're using cotton hand towels. Now you cannot sublimate on cotton because, well, the ink may transfer, it'll wash right out. So you want to use polyester so that it, um, I don't know. Bonds. Yes, chemically to... bonds with yes. the polyester and it never washes out. But they make a spray for cotton where you can sublimate on the spray. So I have pre-sprayed these. These are nice and dry now and you can feel they're kind of, feel it, it's kind of stiff. Kind yeah, of like you've got like a little starch, starch on it. Oh, yes, very jinx. good. Oh, me a <laughs> So, like I said, I haven't tried this sublimate spray. So, sublimate. But I can feel it's on here, and hopefully it works great. We yeah. have preheated our Cricut Easy Press here, 380 degrees, and we're gonna sublimate for 60 seconds. So, no. Yeah, yeah. it's this one right here. It's, okay, yep. Yep, it's that, it's that guy right there. All right, you wanna get the high heat tape? Yeah. We'll and so I have pre-pressed this towel so I know exactly where a little square is. So we'll just. All right, top sheet me. All right. All right, Garrett. Garrett loves to put this easy press down and wiggle it around. You don't want to jiggle do it. That. I just give it some jiggles. You don't want to do that. You just want right. to set it on there. In. All right, it's in. And press time, 60 380 seconds. for 60 seconds. We'll hit the green C. All right. <laughs> Noob. 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 <laughs> I pressed the time little button. Top, like clock button on here. Yeah. It's the wrong button. I'm just gonna lean on it. I don't know, he feels the need to do this every time. And I, do. I don't think you need to do it. It's a tiny, thin little piece of cotton material. Yeah, get it down, get on there. Well, I did put if I'm not in. holding it down, then there's no way that I'd be able to move it around. Right, wiggle it around, of mm -hmm. course, uh-huh. So we get that cl cloudy, what is yeah, it? Yeah, shadowing. Shadowing. A shadow, a little double vision. <laughs> little double I did vision. include a piece of the butcher paper underneath and on top, so. Right. I don't want to, because this little, heat pad that we're using. We've forgotten, it's got sublimation ink on it. The next time you it's press. It's got leopard print on it. Yes, so leopard print ends up on so everything. Everything has leopard print on it now. Yes. I'll rest it on that one. All right, I'm All just right. gonna go in, taking it, pull it, woo, it's hot. Just paper, get it. I'm trying, it's hot. Let me wow. do it. It came out okay. Okay, a little blurry, a little Ooh, blurry. A little blurry, but you know what? Where's that piece of paper? Yeah, I think it'd probably be more crisp if we use like actual polyester. But I think it looks good. 
I think it's the sentiment that really counts. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it back together and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So make it look like a hand towel again. Thought it'd be more crisp. Looks a little bleedy. Maybe it's that ghost thing. Maybe I did jiggle it. Give it a little jingle jangle. I don't know. It looks good. Just a little blurry. Well, and I don't know about blue. I would have left it with black ink. Garrett said it was written in blue ink. We should do it in blue ink. And yeah. I was like, no, I don't want to change it. It's no. like changing an official document. <laughs> yeah, serious. That's, <laughs> we have talked about this more than one occasion. <laughs> Step four, we're gonna engrave on the cutting board. I already masked it off using some painter's tape and I tried to find the center. So when I put it in the Glowforge, I'll know where it is in the Glowforge. It's kind of hard to tell where like it is in the Glowforge using the camera. So I marked center. I also marked horizontal. And because it's like three eighths of an inch, I don't think I need to take the tray out. I'm just gonna put it in and uh, see how it does. And it's like she knew, it fits perfectly in Yeah, it fits too. perfect, end to end. But I did need to find center. All right, now you got a bullseye. Yeah, now I got a bullseye. <laughs> Everybody will be happy to know our Glowforge finally made it back. <laughs> <laughs> In its own trip, the Gary Garrett babied the whole way here. It rode in a car seat. <laughs> now in the Glowforge app, I'm just gonna import that same JPEG. Let Glowforge do its little uh, voodoo magic all over it. All right, it's looking pretty good. Let's make it Six and a half high since the cutting board is seven. Line it up in the middle. Gonna use the lines to line up the dots. Material unknown. We're gonna use uncertified material. Now, like I said, this is like three eighths of an inch, so we'll go 0.4 for thickness. We're gonna engrave this with some manual settings. We're gonna go with 1000 speed, 1000 and 100 power. And for dots per inch, let's go 340. Come on, scroll down. 340. We'll name this, we'll name this. Cutting board. Save. Now let's set focus right in the center. I'm gonna scooch it up. Looked a little low. You know, it said it was even. All right, and print. It's gonna calculate on their servers determine how long it's going to print and then send that file to my Glowforge. Should have me look at it. Well, it looked line up on the, uh, on the camera. A little high. <sighs> It looks good though. I just went a little high with it. So, it's a little high. <laughs> so much so that it's on the top. So we're gonna have to do it again. We're gonna have to do it again. All right, where did she get this board? <laughs> Hope it wasn't a family heirloom. <laughs> I don't think so. It looks like it came from like some store. Looks like a store bought one. All right, well, it came out great, it, like, great. Yes. I think the looks, depth is good and yes. everything. Yes. I just feel like it's a bit too high. I even set focus and everything. Hmm. So, so how are you gonna fix that this time? Well, first I gotta go get a, another cutting board. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 
I don't know. Clean my mirror, try to line it up a little better. I don't know. Do you have any tips on lining up your Glowforge projects? Let me know, because I have two problems with the Glowforge app. One, like horizontal and vertical alignment of objects in the Glowforge app. And then two, like outside of like exact middle, sometimes it's hard to uh, see where it's actually gonna lie. Fit, lay, land, engrave, cut. <laughs> What do you guys think? I mean, it looks a lot like the recipe, just like the recipe. Exactly like the recipe. It's a little high, it's a little high. <laughs> I'm gonna go see if I can find another cutting board like this. But it turned out beautifully. Like yeah. I am very, very impressed with the engraving and how that looks. Yeah. It... I mean, it just looks a little silly because it's up <laughs> too high, but I, the, there's not, I mean, it's like perfect etched handwriting. Yeah. There's no bleed, there's no mess. You did a great job cleaning it up. Like, there are no food stains engraved on there or yeah. anything. Super easy. Would it take like 10 minutes to clean this up in Photoshop? Very easy. It was probably the hardest part was lining this up and then waiting for this one hour uh, engrave. Yes, it did take one hour to engrave this, but. but I mean, it's worth it. Otherwise, Look. they all came out great. Uh, I think this came out good. This came out acceptable. Acceptable. I think it would be better if it were on polyester. But the point of this video was to really show you that you can take a recipe like this, yeah. scan it, clean it up, and look what you can do with it. You can really make some keepsakes and, you know, provide it for your family and friends. Yeah, well, and it's a little more sturdy than this piece of piece of <laughs> tissue paper <laughs> it's yellow like i said it's got food stains on it. it does it's got like food stains on it yeah all right well we are about out of time so if you're not going to join us for the patron after show we will see you next week where we'll do it build it and make it again this one's an easy balance it's like too easy who do you think i could flip it and catch it again Yes. <laughs> Is that so that I don't do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I'm it like, anyway. I don't care. What's it matter? Are things <laughs> gonna be? Oh, I don't know. <sighs> Close. One more try. It's a scrap board now. Oh, oh, oh so, so close. close. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, this is what you guys miss on the Patreon after show. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> a lot of balancing on that. A lot of circus acts. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs>